Dear students, now we are going to discuss Colpitt's oscillator and its operation in detail. Colpitt's oscillator is a type of LC oscillator which uses two capacitors and one inductor in its feedback network. This is the construction of Colpitt's oscillator. It consists of an amplifier circuit and feedback network. The amplifier stage uses an active device as a transistor which is in CE configuration mode. The resistors R1, R2, RE are used to provide the proper DC bias to this transistor. CC1 and CC2 or the coupling capacitors are the input side and output side. CE that is the bypass capacitor at this emitter side. Here the output of this amplifier circuit is given as input to this feedback network. The feedback network consists of two capacitors C1 and C2, one inductor L. Here the output VO is given at this capacitor C2. Then we can take that feedback signal as our output across this C1. Let's discuss the working principle of Colpitt's oscillator. When the supply voltage VCC is given to this amplifier circuit, the oscillatory transient current is produced in the tank circuit. This oscillatory current in this circuit produces an AC voltage across the C1 and C2 capacitors. In this feedback network, the terminal 3 is grounded. That means there is a zero voltage at this point. The terminal 1 is at a positive potential if this terminal 2 is at negative potential with respect to terminal 3. If it is positive, then this terminal 1 becomes negative with respect to terminal 3. Hence, the phase difference between the terminals 1 and 2 is always 180 degree. So, this feedback network produces 180 degree phase shift between the terminals 1 and 2. Okay. Here, in CE configuration, the transistor produces 180 degree phase shift between input and output. Therefore, the total phase shift in this circuit is 360 degree. If the feedback is adjusted to get A beta is equal to 1, then this circuit can act as an oscillator. So, based on percussion criterion, that A beta value is equal to 1 and the total phase shift is 360 degree. Both the conditions can be satisfied, okay. This is what given here. The amplifier stage uses an active device as a transistor in CE configuration. Resistors R1, R2 and RE provide the proper DC bias to the transistor. Here the feedback network consists of C1, C2 and one inductor L which determines the frequency of oscillation, okay. This is the overview of the operation of Colpitt's oscillator. When the supply voltage plus VCC is applied to the circuit, an oscillatory transient current is produced in the tank circuit. This oscillatory current produces AC voltage across C1 and C2 capacitors in the tank circuit. In feedback network, the terminal 3 is grounded with a zero potential. Terminal 1 is at positive potential and terminal 2 is at negative potential with respect to terminal 3 and vice versa. Thus, the total phase difference between the terminals 1 and 2 is always 180 degree. In the CE mode, the transistor provides the phase difference of 180 degree between the input and output. Therefore, the total phase shift is 360 degree in the circuit. If the feedback is adjusted to get A beta as 1, then the circuit can act as an oscillator. So, here we can satisfy the conditions of percussion criterion for an oscillator circuit. Okay. This is the equivalent circuit of Colpitt's oscillator. The feedback network consists of C1, C2 capacitors and one inductor L. The output of the amplifier HFE IB is taken as input to this feedback network. So here the output of this amplifier is given 
across this C2 as input to this network. Okay. Then we can take the feedback signal VF which is the input to the amplifier. So here we have to give this VF that is feedback signal as a input to the amplifier across basin emitter. Here HIE represents the input impedance of the amplifier. Do you all understand this? So next we are going to derive the frequency of oscillation. So it is very very important one. For that we can consider the general expression for LC oscillator. So we have already derived the general expression which is common for any type of LC oscillator that is HIE Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3 plus Z1 into Z2 into 1 plus HFE plus Z1 Z3 is equal to 0. So this is the general expression which is applicable for any type of LC oscillator. Okay. For this Colpitts oscillator Z1 and Z2 both are assigned to capacitors. Z3 is inductor. So Z1 is equal to 1 by J omega C1. Z2 is equal to 1 by J omega C2. Here the capacitive reactance can be denoted in the denominator values. So we can write 1 by J omega C1. Here it is 1 by J omega C2. Z3 value is equal to J omega L. We are going to substitute these three values in this first equation. Then we can get HIE. Z1 becomes 1 by J omega C1 plus 1 by J omega C2 plus J omega L. Here it is Z1 Z2. That is 1 by J omega C1 into 1 by J omega C2 1 plus HFE. Z1 into Z3 means 1 by J omega C1 into J omega L is equal to 0. Okay. So in the next step for further simplification we have to consider 1 by j as minus j. So this term can be written as HIE into 1 by j can be written as minus j by omega c1 minus j by omega c2 plus j omega l. Here we can multiply these two values. So 1 by j squared omega squared c1 c2 into 1 plus HFE plus j omega j omega cancel. Then we can get l by c1 is equal to 0. So next step. We have to take this minus j as a common term from this bracket. Okay, then we can get minus j HIE into 1 by omega C1 plus 1 by omega C2. Here it becomes minus, right? Because we have taken minus j as a common one. So this term can be written as minus omega L. Here 1 by j squared. So here j squared is equal to what? Minus 1. So we can write minus 1 plus HFE divided by omega squared C1 C2 plus L by C1 is equal to 0. So here we can have a real term L by C1 minus 1 plus HFE by omega squared C1 C2 and imaginary path is minus HIE into 1 by omega C1 plus 1 by omega C2 minus omega L. Okay. Then we can write the real term as the first one. L by C1 minus 1 plus HFE divided by omega squared C1 C2 minus J HFE 1 by omega C1 plus 1 by omega C2 minus omega L is equal to 0. So consider this is the second equation. So this is the general solution of the Colpitts oscillator. The first one is the general solution for any type of LC oscillator. After substituting the values of Z1, Z2, Z3, we can get the general solution of Colpitts oscillator. So this one is very, very important. From this equation, we can get the frequency of oscillation as well as the condition for oscillation. Okay. At resonant condition, reactance values both can cancel each other. That is XL is equal to XE. As I told you, at resonant condition means we can get the maximum output. So when do we get the maximum output? Whenever the reactant values are equal. That is XL is equal to XC. Here imaginary path represents the reactance values. So in order to determine the frequency of oscillation, frequency of oscillation represents the resonant frequency. So here we can equate the imaginary path of the second equation to 0. Okay, 
here we can take only the imaginary term minus HIE 1 by omega C1 plus 1 by omega C2 minus omega L is equal to 0. We can move this HIE this side that is minus HIE this side as a denominator. Correct? So here 0 divided by minus HIE means this term becomes 0. 0 divided by anything? It's 0. Okay, then we can have 1 by omega C1 plus 1 by omega C2 minus omega L is equal to 0. Then we have to move this minus to this side as plus. So omega L is equal to 1 by omega C1 plus by omega C2. Here 1 by omega is a common term. We can take it outside. So 1 by omega into 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2. Then we can move this omega to this side. Then we can get omega squared L is equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2. Then move this L to this side as a denominator. Then we can get omega squared is equal to 1 by L into 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2. Consider this as the third equation. So we are going to use this third equation in the next derivation part. Okay. Then we have to consider this 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 as 1 by C equivalent. That means equivalent capacitance of the Colpitt's oscillator. So 1 by C equivalent is equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2. Then we can write that value as 1 by L into C equivalent. Then we have to take the square root on both the sides to get omega. So omega is equal to 1 by square root of L into C equivalent. Okay. As we all know that omega is equal to 2 pi F. That is equal to 1 by square root of LC equivalent. We have to find out the frequency of oscillation. That is F is equal to 1 by 2 pi square root of L into C equivalent. Where that equivalent capacitance is considered as 1 by C equivalent is equal to 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2. Do you all understand this? This is the frequency of oscillations for Colpitt's oscillator. So we are going to solve problems using this formula. Okay, this is very, very important. So next we are going to derive the condition for oscillation. At which condition the oscillation starts. Okay, for that we have to equate the real part of the second equation to zero. So what is the real part here? L by C1 minus 1 plus HFE divided by omega squared C1 C2 is equal to zero. Then we have to move this minus sign to this side as a plus 1. Then we can get L by C1 is equal to 1 plus HFE divided by omega squared C1 C2. Consider this as the fourth equation. So now we are going to substitute third equation in this fourth. That means omega squared value is replaced with the term 1 by L into 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2. That is the third equation, right? Then we can take the LCM here. Then 1 by L into C1 plus C2 divided by C1 C2. Then we can cancel these two terms and move this L to this numerator. 1 by L means we can move this term to the numerator. Then we can get L by C1 is equal to 1 plus H of E L divided by C1 plus C2. Then we can cancel this L term and then move this C1 C2 as a numerator. Then we can get C1 plus C2 divided by C1 is equal to 1 plus HFE. So here this C1 is common for this one as well as this. This can be written like this. C1 by C1 plus C2 by C1. So C1, C1 cancel. We can get 1. So here we can get the value as 1 plus C2 by C1. Okay. This can be written as 1 plus C2 by C1 is equal to 1 plus HFE. Then we cancel this one. Finally, we can get HFE is equal to C2 by C1. This is the required forward gain of the transistor for getting oscillation. So this is the condition for oscillation.